The George Ellicott House is the last of the 18th century houses that once lined the banks of the Patapsco River in the Ellicott City or Ellicott Mills area. George Ellicott was a son of one of the founders of Ellicott Mills. In 1972, we're all familiar with Agnes and the devastation that that created. And that knocked down, destroyed the Jonathan Ellicott House. And the Jonathan Ellicott House was just upstream from the George Ellicott House. So then in 1975, three years later, it was Eloise that came charging down the river. It did extensive damage to the George Ellicott House so Sam Rogers said, look, if we're going to have these 100-year floods every three years, I think we better demolish this building because it just doesn't make sense. So there were a group of us who went down and talked to Sam. We asked him to give us time to see what we might be able to do with the house. We got some money together and hired a architectural firm by the name of Greaves. They came up with three alternatives, and one of them was demolition. Another one was to create an historic ruin. God only knows how long that would last in the face of some of these floods that come charging down the river. And the third was restoration. And nobody in their right mind, really, would restore that building where it was. And a group of us figured that maybe we could save this building if we could get it across the street. Sam Rogers kindly said, you can put it in this lot that I'm not using across the street. And that would be out of the floodway. Well, I think the project went over about a three year period, more or less, starting with actual disassembly, rebuilding the corner, and the move was the first part. April the 25th, 1987, on a very dreary day, the building began to move across the street, inch by inch. Once we got to moving it, we had this amazing guy, Bill Patron, it was a doozy, but it turned out it moved fine. It moved far better than I really expected. I do remember very well that there were people who said, there's no way that building is going to stay together moving across the street. It's one thing to move a wooden frame building, but to move a stone building. The biggest challenge I think that I had to deal with with this house was trying to document it, measure the existing house with some accuracy, given that the corner, the southwest corner of the house was missing, it had been washed out by a flood. The challenge was uh, accessing the existing structure to get decent measurements, and then once I had those, it was a, I was able to plan the site, more or less, for the location of the house. The technical challenges are more involved from the house mover standpoint, about how to insert steel beams underneath the floors, at intervals that would allow them then to jack the house up off of its foundation and put it on basically a flatbed and dollies to move it. It worried me more than any because the back wall is more rubble stone than the front wall is. The front wall is in good condition, the back wall is in terrible condition with the small stone. We had trouble with the back wall from the very damn first day we started jacking and that is why and when the worry started. Now we always knew that we were going to break down the, the rear mother-in-law addition stone by stone, store it here during the first part of the move, and then rebuild it. On the other side of the road, the challenge was rebuilding the corner and documenting the existing structure and planning the site, the current site, for the, the new house position on the site. The only other challenge was in the siting of the house on this side of Frederick Road where we had to have the footing in place 
prior to the move. We had to excavate the site and then pour the footings ahead of the actual building. So when we did that, then we encountered a few other things, basically that we're still in the Patapsco River, more or less. And so we had to deal with the water beneath the soil. We knew that a fair amount of a fudge factor had to be included in the footings to allow for an inch or two of play, if you will, in the placement of the house. So the footings were all made wider than they needed to be structurally to accommodate possible shifts of the house in one direction or another by a couple inches. See that plumb bob sitting right there? Right on the money. Came in, it came in absolutely perfect. Slow and easy and she was right on it. It took all day. But they did do it in a day. But they started early and it was, as I recall, I think it was late in the afternoon when it was finally completed. There wasn't anything that was difficult or impossible. We were fortunate that we were able to have the original stair components on the upper level that were used as a template to rebuild the first floor section of the stairs. Pretty much the fireplaces were where they are and the mantel pieces had been salvaged earlier so we were able to reapply those basically. We had good uh, templates from the moldings, the trim, the architectural detail that was mostly refabricated once the house was being rehabilitated in the second phase. The main thing was the view panel of the floor framing below the first floor. Um, that We thought that was an interesting and uh, unique construction feature that should be visible to folks for the future. At one time, earlier photographs showed a wing perpendicular to the house on the south end that we believe to be a kitchen wing. It was almost entirely down at rubble. We were able to keep the original finish, plaster finish on the rear stone wall where the kitchen wing had butted up to the main part of the house. It had been finished, it was a finished space. So that plaster was left intact as a ghost or a reminder of the original wing. Eventually, there was probably about a million dollars that was spent on creating the final product, you might say. I'm so grateful that it sits there now and has survived some major floods since then because of its position and it would have been destroyed otherwise. I just would have hated to see that valuable structure that represented so much of value to be demolished. And I think this building, what it represents architecturally, historically, and culturally needs to be uh, preserved as long as man can preserve it. <laughs>